Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our online crib service. Like last year, we're not able to welcome all of you into church for the crib service, but unlike last year, I'm back in here recording everything. I'm Rachel Cooper, and I'll be guiding you through the Christmas story as we have done for many, many years all together. We're going to start off our service by singing Come and Join the Celebration. I'm going to light our advent wreath now. We light four candles today. The first candle that we're going to light represents all of us. It represents all of God's people throughout the world. The second candle represents the prophets that told a very, very long time ago that a baby was going to be born and he was going to be the son of God. The third candle represents John the Baptist. Now he was actually a cousin of Jesus and he arrived not too long before Jesus was born and it was his job to say, all of those stories that you've heard for hundreds of years, it's time, it's happening, Jesus is coming, get ready. And the fourth candle is for Mary, Jesus's mother, who an angel appeared to, and the angel said that she was going to give birth to the Son of God. And Mary trusted in the angel, and she trusted in God, and she said, if that's what you're saying, then so be it. I will do your wishes, Lord. And the, oh, no, hang on. Can't light that yet. We can light this one in the middle at midnight because this is the candle that gets lit when Jesus is born. Now let's start our story, shall we? Our story tonight takes place in a stable in a town called Bethlehem. And Bethlehem is where everybody is traveling to throughout our story for lots and lots of different reasons. But the person already there is the innkeeper. See, he owns the stable that we're going to be talking about today. So let's set the scene, shall we? Let's pop the innkeeper into the stable to take care of it. And let's sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
characters. So at the time of our story, everybody had to go back to the place where they were born to be counted as part of something called a census. And the main characters in our story for this round are a man called Joseph and his wife, Mary. Now, Mary was very, very heavily pregnant and was struggling to travel, but she still had to go with Joseph to Bethlehem because it's where Joseph was born. So Joseph walked to Bethlehem, but Mary, she rode on a donkey. So let's pop Joseph and Mary and the donkey into the stable and we're all going to sing Little Donkey together. The innkeeper has allowed Joseph and Mary to stay in his stable because there is no room anywhere else. All of the hotels are full of people coming back to Bethlehem because it's where they were born. So Joseph and Mary have to stay in a stable. Now it's not very comfortable, it's not very warm, but it is better than having to sleep outside. And in the dead of night, Mary gave birth to her baby and as God had told her to do, she called the baby Jesus and she wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger. And when Jesus was born, a bright star appeared over the stable so that everybody would know where the Son of God had been born. Now we've got to be a bit quiet now because Jesus has only just been born, so we're going to sing Silent Night.
Now, do we think we should send baby Jesus some visitors? Who should we send? We could send kings, we could send celebrities, we could send politicians. But no, that's not who God chose to send first. God actually chose to spread the word among shepherds. Now, at the time of this story, nobody really liked shepherds. They were smelly, they slept outside, they lived with the sheep. But God thought that they should be the first to know that Jesus had been born. So he sent an angel to tell them. Now the angel appeared in the sky out of nowhere and the shepherds were absolutely terrified. Well, wouldn't you be if an angel suddenly appeared out of nowhere? But the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring good news for you and for all men. A child has been born in Bethlehem. He is the son of God and he is here to save you all. Yes, including you shepherds and you should go to see him. And once the shepherds had got over their shock, they off they went to go and see the baby Jesus. And as they ran down to Bethlehem, a host of angels appeared in the sky and they all sang glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to men on whom his favour rests. So let's get the shepherds and the angels, and of course, not forgetting the sheep, very important. Let's get them all into the stable. And while we do that, we're going to sing the Calypso Carol, see him lying on a bed of straw. got some shepherd visitors but there are others who have been traveling a very very long time in order to see Jesus. They are our magi, our three wise men. Well we think there were three, we're not really sure but let's go with three because I have three of them right here. The magi or the wise men or sometimes they're called kings they had been traveling for a very long time. They'd been following the star that has now appeared over Jesus' stable because an ancient prophecy had said that one day a star would appear and if you followed it, you would find the Messiah, the Almighty, the Son of God who was going to save us all. 
Now these magi wanted to honour Jesus. They wanted to bring him three very special gifts to show everybody just how special he was. And those gifts were gold, frankincense and myrrh. And we can't expect the Magi to walk all the way. They all rode on camels. So let's pop the Magi and the camels into the stable. And while I do that, we're going to sing We Three Kings. Jesus got such a range of visitors and why is his birth special in the first place? Well, as we all know now, but not many people did back then, Jesus is the Son of God. He was born to Mary, who was married to Joseph, so Jesus had a father on earth as well. But his heavenly father, our God, wanted lots and lots of people to understand just why Jesus was so special. So the first people to visit Jesus were the shepherds. We, we, we didn't think very much of the shepherds back then. We didn't like them. They lived 
way outside of the town of Bethlehem. Nobody wanted anything to do with them. But when Jesus was born, they were the first. That was to show that Jesus has come for everybody. It doesn't matter who you are in society, it doesn't matter how much money you have, it doesn't matter what job you do, Jesus came to earth for you. And then the Magi that came to visit Jesus, they brought gold, frankincense and myrrh, all very special, very precious gifts that you would only give to a king or a priest or somebody very, very, very important. So this is God saying, look, this, this little baby, he's come for all of you. But that doesn't mean you should forget just how special he is. But maybe we should let Jesus sleep for a bit now. Let's sing Away in a Manger. sending us your only son, Jesus. A gift more precious than gold, frankincense and myrrh. A gift that was sent for everybody to be with us evermore. Amen. We're going to sing our final carol of the afternoon now. It is Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Thank you so much for joining us for our crib service online this year. May you all have a wonderful and blessed Christmas. And may the joy of the angels, the wonder of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, and the peace of the Christ child be with you all now and throughout the Christmas season. Amen.